Okay. Boom. Uh, my gosh. Hood up. It's a hood up type day. I'm getting sick, y'all. It's not good. Not good. But drink some throat cozy. Some turmeric, if that's how you say it. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. That anti-inflammatory. Mother Nature has your back always. Uh, journal number two. <laughs> I... So yesterday I had a bad day. Not as in like my day was bad. As in, you know, I was on top of my game. Thank goodness for sleep because sleep stops all momentum of thoughts. And I was able to have a better day. I still wasn't exactly where I'd like to be, but I was definitely better. That's the goal, better. Um, and I thought a lot. I thought a lot. I thought, I think so much. <laughs> and um, I'm really happy too, because now my mind's at the place where I can kind of meditate again without like having thoughts come up that make me just want to like gouge my eyes out. Aggressive, I know, sorry. But... I know I was thinking a lot today and a huge thing that I was thinking about is intimacy 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 you see I always thought I was a um, super introverted person like to be alone which was true when I was younger that was very true um, but there's just something special about like sharing an experience with someone don't get me wrong. I love to do stuff by myself. Oh my God. I love to do stuff by myself. But lately I found that if you have an experience with someone else, hmm, it's pretty fun, but it has to be intimate. And me especially, the people that I've shared intimate experiences, and I, I, I guess this goes for just about everyone because I'm pretty sure everyone's like this. Um, I don't forget them ever, 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 ever 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 and they have a special place in my heart and it's almost like i'm kind of bonded to them in a certain way um like when i went to concert i went to a random concert not a random concert i went to a polyphia concert which is a concert i wanted to go to forever and i went by myself and i met this guy there named jonathan wise and we shared that concert and i've been wanting to go there forever and he experienced it with me the whole way through he was with me he helped me out when i got a flat tire um he got a shirt signed by the bassist while I was there and the guitarist while I was there as along with me. Um, and it was just like such an intimate experience. And we'd never met each other before until that moment. And we both felt comfortable, comfortable enough to just like be ourselves at that concert. And that's kind of what I've been noticing intimacy is, is just being able to just function fully from your heart which is hard to do <laughs> nowadays because everyone's so scared of being hurt. I mean, children are really good at doing it with each other. That's why little kids uh, can either hate each other or make so many friends. <laughs> and that's why your childhood friends are always your longest lasting because that's when you are most functioning from your heart and you are being yourself the most, which is, again, intimacy. It's just being yourself around another person. You can have intimate moments with yourself, um, but there's just something special about having another person there. And, you know, that kind of ties in with like my best friend, my best friend, Ethan, um, going through a hard time in his life right now, but we shared so many intimate moments throughout our lives, especially growing up that it's like my image of him doesn't sway. He's done a lot of things he's not proud of, uh, it's, it's just none of my business and none of any of our businesses. But let's say people's image of him has really swayed. And I totally get that. But when you share an intimate moment with someone, at least for me, that my image of them doesn't sway anymore. I'm locked on who they are as a person. Because when you see that in someone, it just doesn't change i mean i don't think it should change because if you know that that person is like that why would you ever think different of them you know um and that's kind of what has been holding me together through all this hard stuff has been uh people who i've had intimate moments with telling me that you know who, who 
I mean, granted, I'm a lot different than I was uh, five days ago. Um, it's people like that who have shared intimate moments who don't get mad at me, but just go, hey, that's not you that have been keeping me going. And uh, I guess that's that's kind of why I also keep fighting for Sarah. Now, a bunch of people keep telling me what to do and how to handle the situation. I totally respect their um, perspectives, and I've actually learned a lot from people's perspectives. But the thing is, is all of them are missing a piece of the story. The only people who have the full story are me and Sarah. Um, and another huge thing is a lot of people have never had intimate moments with her when they speak on an what I should do uh, to her or how I should act towards her. Um, And it's, it made me think a lot about why letting go is so hard for me because I've let go to the extent to where, you know, I'm facing reality and what is going on right now. But it's that intimacy. I don't think I've, you know, being that it's a female, you can have a few more selective intimate moments that you can't have, um, well, as a straight male, that I wouldn't have with another guy. And it's like when there's the romantic factor added into the intimate moments, it's just a whole different level. Granted, intimate moments themselves are some of the most amazing. Okay, we're going to start from right here again because I accidentally turned off my mic. Um But yeah, no, it's just, I've just had so many intimate moments with the romantic factor added in that I understand now why it's so much harder to let go. And I've let go to the point where I'm not bugging her in her whole life, and I don't expect anything from interactions. In fact, every interaction that we've had has just not been forced. I don't don't seek it. I don't do anything. Um, the talks we have aren't forced like they were before. They just happen. They're, everything's just kind of unraveling in front of me. And um, it's so much more intimate like that. And I'm kind of learning that that's just kind of the key to life now is just make everything you do intimate. And by intimate, it's just kind of like being right up in there, being experience the wholeness of it. Uh, even your thoughts when you're thinking, just stop focusing on other things just be intimate with the thought you want to focus when you're when you're doing your job be intimate with it and uh it'll help you notice what you like and what you don't like because if you don't like your job you don't you're gonna have a lot harder time being intimate with it and a lot harder time enjoying it and um the people that you're around if you find it hard to be intimate around them why are you around them no i've been thinking a lot let me let me whip out the journal real quick let me see some things I wrote. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah. See, the reason I was thinking about intimacy is because of this whole, uh, this whole situation. You know, I am not. <laughs> commitment to anything has always been kind of off to me ever since, I, even since I was little, because I don't like to be held back ever. In fact, the only reason me and Sarah ever got together in the first place was because she was the only girl who could. Well, first off, she was gorgeous. (laughs) Um, But then she's also the girl that could uh, mesh with my life perfectly without holding me back. And at some point or another, I don't know why I kind of just fell off my train of thought that I have. Because the thing is, when I'm in relationships, I've learned that to think that you're going to marry that person is a very risky and bad idea. You just literally have to go almost day by day or week by week, maybe month by month if you're uh, extra risky. But that's what I did for the longest time. And that's when I think, no, that's not what I think. That's when I know things are at their best. It's when, I I don't know, I I start to force who I I don't know. Identity crisis. Ah, you know, college does that. Um, so yeah, when I when I started to change who I was, that's when all, all things got muddled up. But that's what I noticed is um, commitment. Because one thing she's been saying the whole time has been, I don't want commitment. I don't want to. I don't want a, a very serious thing at this young age. And 
at first I was kind of like, why? Like, I don't, I don't get it. But uh, I don't know. It's like in the back of my mind, something was just always fighting me. And now that I've, you know, I've calmed down from that crazy des- state of desperation. It's like, I've learned that about myself a lot more. Is that like, I don't like commitment and it, and it's, it goes to like a bunch of things. Um, uh, school for, for one, I dropped from college because I got what I wanted out of it. And then all I saw was it holding me back and I feel no, I felt no reason to commit to it. Um, guitar. I love guitar, but I was spending hours upon hours upon hours on it for a long time. And it was fun. It was some of the most fun things I ever had. In fact, I actually love that instrument because it's, you have to be intimate with it. You have to focus incredibly hard, but you know, I wasn't really doing too much with it. And, uh, so then I took up sports after that and I enjoyed sports a lot, but I don't play because again, it's a commitment. (laughs) Call me lazy if you want, but I just like to experience a ton of things and just have a bunch of intimacy with it. But I want another person there. (laughs) It's so much more fun when you share that with another person. When you have another person there to experience that intimacy with, because then when you two talk, you can almost bring that intimacy back from that moment into the current moment. And it's just home. It's its own. It's its own experience. My gosh, everyone's had those conversations with people, their best friends, uh, close ones, stuff like that. But uh yeah, that's just kind of it's kind of my thoughts. I just kind of realize that that it's not. I ain't looking for no wife. I ain't. <laughs> I don't even know what I want. All I know is that I want to have a person that I can share intimate moments with. That's really what I miss a lot. And uh, to me, Sarah is a fire that I need to be careful how I play with. Because if I dive straight in, I'm gonna get burned and I'm gonna get hurt, and it's gonna take time for those wounds to heal. But if I sit on the outside, it's comforting and warm. And that's kind of how I've been treating her until she cools down and we can have better talks. Um, I have no plans to force myself upon her. I have no, and I don't think she has any plans to force herself upon me in any way, shape or form. But it's just, there's something special and different about her that I can't really shake. And it's really annoying because there's a lot of moments in the past month and just in the two years I've known her that I should have hated her. And I should have cut her off like I would have with everyone else. But for some odd reason, I haven't. Hmm. (laughs) All right. That's a a look into my personal life, a personal life for all you strangers that I don't know that are watching this. Uh, Yeah, I'll catch y'all later.